It was a long wait, but worth it, as the next generation spacecraft sticks its landing. A clear win for SpaceX and its Starship, the rocket SpaceX wants to use to take humankind back to the moon and then to Mars. Make sure you watch until the end of the video, because today we will talk about how Starship SN15 nailed its landing. We will also analyze the test flight and get a clearer overview of the upcoming prototypes. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe to Future File to watch more fascinating videos on futuristic tech. SN15 was the fifth fully formed starship to take to the skies, and the first to break the chain of failures after SN8, SN9, SN10 and SN11 ended in fiery impacts. Similar to previous high-altitude flight tests of Starship, SN15 was powered by ascent by three Raptor engines. As methane can burn on a brown side, it is normal to see this dark brown and yellow colour under a Starship during a launch on a cloudy day. However, as soon as the Starship passes through the cloud cover, the Raptor exhaust interacts with the atmosphere and the brown and yellow mist above it contrasts sharply with the white background. At one kilometre in altitude, the rocket exhaust turns remarkably transparent, with a Fresnel-like purple and orange coating along the edges. Different from its predecessors, at 2 kilometers in altitude, it is worth noting that this camera angle is different than past Starship test flights. That is because the camera is mounted on the forward flap of the Starship. Unfortunately, about T plus 02 into the flight, the video from the engine cameras freezes and only resumes after 2 minutes. We can see Raptor number 61 has just shut down after a brief hover at 10 kilometers in the air. The entire Starship has turned over onto its belly and has begun the test flight's descent process. At this point, Starship gracefully slides out of the sky at the slowest possible speed, without using up precious rocket fuel. The Starship is now where it primarily uses its flaps to stabilize its altitude and keep its belly pointed down. One point to mention is that there doesn't seem to be much going on inside the engine bay, with the Raptor engines just standing by. But when we switch back to the camera mounted on the forward starboard flap, you'll notice white gas slipping past the aft starboard flap and up into the sky. At this point, the SN15 has reached a distance of 6 kilometers from the ground. It will now fire up to 3 Raptor engines and turn the vehicle vertical. However, before the fire, we will see these engines spread apart to avoid collisions with one another. At around T plus 0545, SN15's Raptor engines reignited as the vehicle performed a landing flip maneuver immediately before touching down the landing pad. And just like that, after years of research, development and rapid prototyping, SpaceX made history with the perfect landing of SN15. Following the landing, there was a small fire caused by residual fuel. However, it was quickly contained. Elon Musk confirmed the success on Twitter, telling his more than 52 million fans the landing was nominal. Though the landing itself was a huge success for SpaceX, the fact that the data they are now able to get off of a post-flight Starship should be the big news. Until now, most data they got was from avionics, other software-based systems. Now, with a physical intact Starship, they can inspect physical hardware and see the weaknesses to improve on in future Starships. I'd argue being able to inspect it is a bigger deal than most anything else. For the first time, the historic landing of a Starship prototype brought an end to SpaceX's series of test flights that resulted in explosions. SN15's four immediate predecessors all ended up in pieces after attempting similar flights over the past five months, despite each hitting almost every milestone except soft landing. SN10 managed to land safely at the end of its March flight, but the craft exploded after a fire broke out at its base. Yet, despite everything, SpaceX seems undeterred by past failures. SpaceX says these test flights of Starship are all about improving our understanding and development of a fully reusable transportation system designed to carry both crew and cargo on long duration interplanetary flights and help humanity return to the moon and travel to Mars and beyond. SpaceX has learned something new and significant from each failed test flight. While SpaceX likely already managed to determine a great deal from over-the-air telemetry and wreckage taken from Starship's SN8 through SN11, it now has a virtually unharmed full-scale, full-fidelity prototype to truly compare and contrast with more theoretical engineering and flight performance models. 
In addition, the amazing victory of SN15 will provide SpaceX with a vast amount of data from any onboard cameras and data recorders, as well as the physical state of Starship, which includes three Raptor engines and several minutes of flight time. But what's next? SpaceX plans to launch test flights SN16 and SN17, which will assess the Starship's upgraded design, as well as the ability to withstand the heat of atmospheric re-entry. However, the reality is that things could go in several directions, depending on the state of Starship SN15 and how successful SpaceX determines the flight was. Might try to refly SN15 soon, Elon Musk tweeted on May 7, 2021. If Starship SN15 and its tanks, flaps and raptors are in great condition, SpaceX could do as it did during Starship SN8's near-total progress, and scrap Starship prototypes SN17, SN18 and SN19 before real work begins. In that scenario, SN15 could even fly a second time. Anything is possible with SpaceX's Starship program, particularly now that CEO Elon Musk seems to be seriously considering a giant tower with arms as a replacement for landing legs. Musk wants to move fast and break space. Musk recently said that he expects the system to be fully operating in 2023, although he did admit that his timelines tend to be ambitious. SpaceX's next-generation launch vehicle, the Starship, will stand 394 feet 120 meters tall when combined with its super-heavy first-stage booster. Starship, the heart of Musk's ambitions, will make human space travel more affordable and regular. The first orbital Starship flight of the Starship is scheduled for the end of the year. Musk has stated that he intends to fly Japanese billionaire Yusaku Meizawa around the moon with the Starship in 2023. Starship SN16 is almost complete and could be ready to roll to the launch pad as soon as next week. Musk has also announced that SpaceX is on track to launch Starship into orbit for the first time by July 2021. Beginning with Starship SN20, those initial orbital flight tests will use Starship prototypes with far more upgrades than the hundreds of improvements present in SN15. It is unclear how significant the upgrades needed to move from the SN15's design to an orbit-capable Starship are. Still, considering SpaceX's rapid progress, their new prototypes are sure to impress us. But we should all pause a bit to appreciate how SpaceX has made history with SN15. This is a huge step forward in Musk's mission to make human life multiplanetary. Like many other times, this time too, SpaceX proved the critics wrong. Their unconventional spaceship with new, never-used-before liquid methane rocket motors, unheard-of aerodynamics, retro-looking fins, can indeed do the free-fall flips, gyrations and land on its feet. It is at an unprecedented speed that SpaceX is progressing with its versions of Starship. Remember the first time Falcon rockets came back and landed? How astonishing it seemed! And now it is the normal. Now that Starship has perfected the landing, it is just a matter of time that orbit-capable Starships will be ready. If you like this video, you may also like to watch the video shown in this end screen on SN15 Historic Landing. See you there!